Hey, this is Stacy Hayes. I'm glad you decided to listen to The Prodigal Son. I spent over a decade thinking God was mad at me and he was some bipolar old man sitting on his throne with a lightning bolt in one hand and the hammer in the other just waiting for me to mess up. That's not God, that's religion. God loves every one of us no matter where we're at in life and he's waiting to see us coming to him like the prodigal son did in Luke 15, 11 through 24. Read it, you'll be glad you did. Believe what God's word says about you over any opinion you have of yourself and watch God work a miracle in your life. Now let's see what the word of God has to say today. Father, I thank you, God, for this opportunity to teach your word. Lord, I praise you, and I thank you for all you've done, all you're going to do. Lord, I praise you for the truth in your word. Guide and direct in everything I say and do will give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If I had have came up and, and understood as a young man what I understand today, I would have never ran away from God the way I did. I I have come to the conclusion over the last few years of my life that God is good and His mercy endureth forever. I didn't understand that a lot of years ago. I had no idea what I was missing at that time in my life. I thought God was a tyrant. And I've said it before, and I'll say it probably a million times before that, or later, that God is not some crazy bipolar old man sitting on his throne with a lightning bolt in one hand and a hammer in the other just waiting for you to mess up. But he's a merciful, compassionate good God that sits on his throne and loves you and cares for every one of us. I don't care what we're doing or where we're at. God loves us and he cares for us. And that that's something that I want to get across to every one of us, every person that listens to this broadcast is that God loves you no matter what religion has said to you, no matter what religion has has put in your head, no, what, no matter what Satan has tried to deceive you into thinking, God loves you. He cares for you. Psalms 145, 8 and 9 says, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all His works. That's Psalms 145, 8 and 9. And that's a truth that will stand forever. You know, the Bible says that God said, I am the Lord, I change not. And if He said that, In Psalms 145, he's still saying that today. He is compassionate and merciful. He loves us and he cares for us. And somewhere along the line, religion has really messed this thing up. Deceived a lot of people and pushed a lot of people away because they feel like that they're unworthy. They're ashamed of the mistakes they've made. I know I was. And, and you know, I, I had a lot of people. I had a, a person tell me one time, said, ain't you ashamed? And, and, you know, it just came up in me. I knew what to say and how to say it. And I, I told them, I said, no, I am not. I have asked for, for, asked for forgiveness, and he has forgiven and 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 that that was freeing to me because there's there's people in this world that good people that don't realize what they do and how the, how they tear people down but but God gave me peace about that because I had asked for forgiveness 
and he had forgiven. And, you know, we've got to see that. You know, the Bible talks about, you know, a lot of people have heard the story about the woman that was caught in the, in, the, in the act of adultery and they brought her to Christ and said this, by the law, this woman's supposed to be stoned. They said, what do you say? And after a few minutes of him drawing in the sand and and not really paying them a whole lot of attention, he looks up at them and says, those, without, those that are without sin cast the first stone. And the Bible says that they all left and left her standing there with him. The Bible says that he raised up and asked the woman, says, woman, where is thine accusers? And, and, and she said, they're not here. And he said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. There, there's scripture after scripture in God's word. You know, we've, we've made, we've amplified our mistakes and blowed them up into something that, they're, that really God, after we, after we repent of them, don't pay any attention to it anymore. Said, he said he'd throw them into the sea of forgetfulness and, and forget all about it. But we, through our guilty conscience and condemnation of ourselves, along with religious condemnation and, and satanic condemnation, because basically that's God don't damn anybody. You know, that's, that's the root word of condemnation is damn and and we we've we've missed that so if you're being condemned in your heart for something it's either your flesh doing it through your, through your conscience your god-given conscience or it's satan trying to condemn you and the bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus See, we've got to see this and, and see the truths of this because Satan uses every tool he has to make us forget what God's Word says to us about our mistakes and about our lives. I lived a defeated life for over 40 years, over 20 years as a Christian, a defeated life because I was looking for for. I guess for a feeling, I was looking to my flesh to be good enough, and it wasn't. I heard Kenneth Hagin talk about it. He said he said that uh, what is his name? The old English evangelist. Anyway, the guy said that uh, the only person in the Bible that ever went on feelings was deceived. And he was talking about Isaac when he felt of Jacob's arms and says it, it feels like Esau, but it sounds like Jacob. He was deceived into giving, giving uh, the blessing to Jacob instead of Esau. So he went on his feelings and he went on what he could feel with his, his hands because he, uh, because he was blind. And, and, and we've got to see and understand that this walk the way, that God wants us to walk in this world that we live in is not by carnal means. It's not by, our, by our, what we can see with our ears, our, see with our eyes and hear with our ears and feel with our senses. But it's through faith. The Bible says that by grace are you saved. Through faith not through feelings. And somewhere, religion has got in and just, just turned this backwards and turn and deceive so many people on what they're doing and, and how they feel about themselves. And, you know, I've said it over and over, 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says, for he was made to be sin for us that we might be the righteousness of God in Him. 
And, and if you can ever get that sin conscious out of your mind and start looking to being Christ conscious of who you are in Him, you can live a victorious Christian life. Be strong in Him. Be strong in what he, he says you are instead of how you feel about yourself and the mistakes that you've made. Sin won't, have, sin won't rule over you if you'll start living your life through Him instead of through your strength. Sin will have to go in your life, and it'll go very easily because you're living in His strength and not your own. Matthew 7 Starting with the seventh verse. Now this is, this is what the Word says about how good God is, how compassionate He is, and how, how much He wants to love us and bless us. The seventh verse of the seventh chapter of Matthew says, Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what is there of you? Or what man is there of you? Whom he, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, Will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good gifts to them that ask him? And the twelfth verse says, Therefore all, therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even to them. For this is the law of and the prophets. Now, basically, what that says is that if, if if you know, being a fleshly man, how to give good gifts to your children, to be compassionate and loving, and and want to see your kids, you know, blessed in this world, how much more is God able to do that and willing to do that? See, we like I said, we've got this this skewed view of God that He's a tyrant. And, and that he's constantly wanting to shame you and beat you down for what you have done. Go and read Luke 15. That's what this whole podcast was started because of. Luke 15, 11 through 24. That young man took all that his father had worked for and took it out and blowed it and came home prepared to be a hired servant for the rest of his days. But it just, I want to read it because it, it, this, that verse means so much, or those little few verses mean so much to me. But I want you to look at what the father done when the young man came home and started with his speech because you know he had he had made a speech over you know he had rehearsed a speech over in the in in the land where he had came from and and you know he was prepared to go home and and be a just a servant but i want you to listen to what the father done it said and he said a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father father give me the portion of goods that follow to me and he that he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would have fain filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough to eat, and I perish with hunger? I will rise and go to my father, and I will say unto my father, Now listen. It says, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy but to be called thy son. Make me one of thy hired servants. And he rose and came to his father. 
But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, now listen to this. He only got half of it out. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be thy son. But the father said to his servant, he cut him off. He shut him down. He said, that's all I was waiting for. He said, the father said to his servant, bring forth the best robes and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. That's all the father was waiting on was repentance. He loved that boy just as much as he loved him when he left. He didn't shame him. He didn't condemn him. He didn't bring his mistakes up one time. And I'm here to tell you this morning that God's not here to bring your mistakes up one time. All he wants to see you do is to come to him. Repent and watch him wrap his arms around you and love you and restore you, save you if you need salvation, or if you're away from God, save or restore you back to where you once was. But this is what God has shown me in his word that he is merciful. He loves us. He cares for us. And there's nothing in this world can separate us from the love of God. He wants to love you. He wants to be there for you regardless of where you're at. All He wants to see you do is to turn to Him. Come to Him. Believe Him. Because I assure you, there's not a, 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 a earthly parent a human parent here on this earth that can love you a fraction as much as God loves you. Now, you may have some of the best parents in the world. You may, you may be able just to, just to ask them for anything and they make it happen. But I don't care how good they are. I don't ha- care how rich they are and how much they have let you get by with on this earth. They don't hold a candle to what God has done for each and every one of us. He sent his son to die for our sins, knowing what we would do, knowing where we would end up, knowing the mistakes that we were made, we we would make. But he still done it. Why? Because he loves us. And and that's something that, you know. The carnal mind can't understand. We have to take that in faith. Just like we live a Christian life by faith. Take God at His Word. Take God at what He says instead of what you've been taught. Take God at, at, at what is in black and white for you to be guided by and for you to, to be strong in. That's what he wants for us. That's what he wants us to do is to to believe what he says. You know, Psalms, the hundredth chapter in the fifth verse says, For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. I've said it over and over and over again. God's no respecter of person. He shows no favoritism towards anyone. He loves us all the same. I don't care if you're, you've been stuck in a, in a drug-ridden society, that that's all you've done for the last years of your life is just being a stupor over drugs, alcohol. I don't care if you're a woman that has slept with half of the town that you live in. God loves you just as much as he does an innocent child. And he will restore you and strengthen you and wipe away all that shame and condemnation that your mistakes have brought upon you. 
It said, like I said, those that be in Christ are new creatures. There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. That's what we've got to get through our heads and, and into our hearts to know that if we be standing in Him, He loves us. The Bible says that, that Christ sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. You know, I've talked about this T-shirt that, that, uh, that I've, I wore. I bought it in Key West, Florida. And believe me, it's not a T-shirt that, that says anything to the glory of God, but I use it for that. And, and I, I, t- I took it to, to this place of business the other day, and this girl was read this she was reading it she read it and uh it says a good lawyer knows the law but a great lawyer knows the judge and and she said something about it and and you know she was looking at it in a carnal way and I said well I said do you have a good lawyer and she she kind of looked at me puzzled and and uh, she didn't know what I was talking about. I said, I've got a great lawyer. And, and she still didn't understand what I was saying. I said, my, my intercessor, my attorney, sits at the right hand of the Father and makes intercession for me, Jesus Christ. I said, do you know that, that Jesus Christ is your attorney? And she kind of giggled and said something. And then she said, don't judge me, and, and laughed about it. But... I, there wasn't there wasn't any judgment in what I was talking to her about, but that's what people think when it comes to God is judgment. That's how they feel when they when they look to God is judgment. And and I was being you know I wanted her to understand that that Jesus Christ was her advocate, her intercessor, her lawyer her attorney that sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for all of us. And she finally understood what I was saying, but but that one little statement, don't judge me, and she kind of just giggled and and just, you know, she she was uncomfortable. And 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 that's where that's where religion has ruined things. Because God don't want you uncomfortable with Him. He wants you to understand more than, than, than you will ever understand until you stand before Him and see the, see the love that He has for each and every one of us. He wants you to see that now. But people can't. They've, they've heard so much and seen so much religion and, and just garbage of 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 religious junk and man's tradition that have drove them away. I did. I I I allowed it to fool me and deceive me into thinking that you know I wasn't good enough. I wasn't. I wasn't. You know, nothing was worthy of of me standing before God. But but I didn't understand that Jesus had paid for that. I understand it, stood it with my mind, but I still felt unworthy. Why? Because I just didn't realize that I stood before God in Him. And you got to take that by faith, and 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 take the 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 junk that that religion in this world has made God out to be, and throw it away. And start looking to Him because He's good and because He He wants to be that good Father, that loving Father. In the in Luke fifteen, He wants to be that in your life. He wants to restore you, to save you, put you at His table, and allow you. To eat the good of the land. Why? Because that's what he wants for everybody. And uh, it's sad to say, but, you know, Satan has deceived us into thinking that we're nothing but, but bugs here on this earth that God just 
mashes one every once in a while just to keep, keep us in line, and that's not him. The Bible says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Christ said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Well, who's the thief? Satan's the thief. Satan's the one that, that does this and gets, gets this, has, does all the killing, stealing, and destroying. But Christ said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Psalms 136, 1 through 3 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good. For his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto God uh, unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of Lords, for his mercy endureth forever. Look to God for that understanding. I have given you his word. And, and I put all these scriptures that I've referenced from into my description for this podcast. Take those scriptures. Read them for yourself. Read them and understand that, that God's not a man that he should lie. But he loves us. And he cares for us. More than anybody will ever know. He created this world and gave it to us. Gave us dominion over it. And what is dominion? What is the definition of dominion? It's control. And he gave us choices to make. And the most important choice that you could ever make in your life is making Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Asking him to save you. Believing it in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and confession it with, his, with your mouth. Make him Lord over your life and get in his word and, and understand that God's a good God. He wants, he wants to love you and bless you and strengthen you and give you victory in this life. Instead of you walking around being downtrodden and beaten down over and over and over again. Satan will do that to you as long as you let him. But I'm here to tell you right now that you don't have to let him ever again. You don't have to ever let him do you that way again. Why? Because you have the truth of God's word. Christ said, I came that I might, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That's how much God loves you. Romans 8 and 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. They walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Won't you look to Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior? Or if you're away from him, come home to him. I promise you, there ain't no shame or condemnation going to come out. Just like I talked about the woman caught, caught in the act of adultery. He didn't even bring it up. He said, go and sin no more. He said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. We've got a messed up view of who God really is in this world. Religion has messed our, our vision up of what, who and what God is because God, because God loves us. He cares for us. He wants more than anything to lift us up and carry us through the hard times of our life. How many times have I walked away from God and God standing trying to help me there's no telling I spent a decade a decade thinking God was mad at me ashamed of what I was doing but yet couldn't see any reason to stop because all I could see was shame and condemnation and all that came from religion 
I was looking, looking at religion and, and, and didn't realize that the father in the prodigal son was the father in heaven waiting on me, waiting to treat me just like the father in the story did. Love me. Don't ever and never bring up my past sins and my mistakes ever again. That's the reason, you know, years ago I used to talk about what I had done and the mistakes I had made. But God is forgive them and forgot about them. Who am I to bring up, ever bring them up again? Now, that's the truth. Christian people stand up and, they, you know, they, they talk, about, talk about what they've done and how they've done it and the mistakes they've made and, 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 and allow the devil just to beat them to death. Just beat them to death over their mistakes instead of laying them at the feet of Jesus and believing what God's Word says. Give your heart and life to Jesus Christ today. That would be the best thing that you could ever do. He loves us and He cares for us. Romans 10 and 9, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this verse with you. And I want you to understand that Romans 10 and 9 is the key to your salvation. It's the key to accepting Jesus Christ into your heart and life. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And the 13th verse of the 10th chapter of Romans says, And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Won't you call upon his name? Allow him to do what he came here and died on the cross to do, and that save you. He loves you. He cares for you. And I promise you he'll be the best friend the most compassionate, merciful, good God that you could ever allow into your life. The Lord loves you. He wants the best for you, and He's a good God. Don't believe what religion has, has deceived so many into thinking that He's some tyrant. God's not a tyrant. He loves us, and His Word proves it. Get in His Word and understand how much He loves you today. Hey, I'm glad you took the time to tune in. Feel free to get in touch. I like hearing from people who have found out that God's not mad at them and realize that He's there for them in every aspect of life. Don't go another day beat down over your past mistakes. Give them to the Lord and let His Word guide you. God bless you all, and remember, the Lord loves the abortion doctors as much as He loves the babies they're killing. God is no respecter of person. He loves us all, no matter what mistakes we've made.